<laughs> I just noticed there that uh, Mensol had typed GG Yo at the uh, in the chat room there uh, before the game started. Anyways, uh, by the way, this is um, a uh, this is the fourth game in the matchup between NBC Game and uh, Hanbit Stars, and uh, this is between Kusan, who we see here, the Protoss player, uh, over yonder on the left, and uh, this is between him and Mensol, uh, who is on the top of the map there at the 12 o'clock position. And he's the Zerg player, and um, I can't tell you anything about Mensal because he's extremely, extremely green. He's got um, on TLPD at least he's got he's got three games on him. Although this is just oh this, that's talking about Katrina. Never mind. Um, I thought that was his record. Uh, he's he's got three games uh, under his belt on TLPD, and he's lost all of them. <laughs> so. Uh, not really expecting much out of him, uh, but we'll see. People have surprised me before, and um, here we see both players are going to scout each other out really quickly, so that that could make things a little bit interesting because both players are going to know uh, what the other is doing, so it's going to be more of a mind game, actually, uh, pretty quick. Um, Poussin is... He's, he's doing pretty well. I, I don't really think much of him, honestly. Uh, that's just me. Some people will disagree, but uh, I, I think of him as kind of a second-tier player. Um, he's he's pretty high up in the in the individual uh, rankings in, in pro in pro league. Uh, he's so he's been winning a lot of matches for Hanbit. I mean, say sorry for um for NBC game, and he's part one of their starting lineup basically. So uh, can't really uh, downplay him though. I mean, he he's uh, it, when they throw in their star lineup, it's it's light C. Bisu and Poussin, like he's their number four guy, and uh, amongst those four, I think he is the fourth. But you know, he's. Uh... Anyways, enough about that. By we'll way, see how he plays Katrina, and uh, I'll point out I did I didn't miss it. I noticed that uh, Mensal has done he's done a quick expansion like normal, but it's kind of strange that what he's done here. Katrina is is uh, the map where you have your um, you have you have. Your ramp right next to your main, and then behind your main, if you go down that that long stretch of land, you have your uh, a natural expansion that's that's kind of protected by your main. The ground forces have to walk through your main to get there, and um, so yeah, it's, <laughs> it's what what Mensal has done. He's he's actually gone and put his first hatch out in an unprotected location, out in in the field, uh, basically. You see it there on the uh, just below the. 12 o'clock position, and uh, oh, maybe that's why he did it is because he's he saw that uh, probe go over there and he knew that that was going to block it. So that was kind of an interesting uh, adaptation on his part. We see that uh, Poussin has gotten that um, second nexus down as well, and now uh, Mensal getting his third hatchery right next to his base. So uh, he's actually not going to really lose a lot from that little block that, uh, that Poussin did. It looks like he actually canceled the pylon. Uh, probably before it was just about to come in, and um, I don't know if he knows about this this expansion over there. He he could just be saying, "Oh, this guy's a noob, and uh, I blocked his base, and now he's he's too confused." So um, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Pusan getting his expansion up already, but uh, Mensal is as well. And now, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it looks like Mensal is trying to get that third that third spot down. It should be his fourth hatchery, and uh, Pusan putting down another pile on there. Uh, really kind of messing around with that spot, but uh, like I said, it's kind of a, a smart move by Mensal by um, By doing what he did by getting that outer expansion So this would normally slow down a Zerg a lot and now in this case he, He's not that far behind because he's still got his second uh, His first expansion up uh, just as quickly as he would have so Pusan really hasn't slowed him down a lot and uh, I still, again, I'm curious to know if he knows about that expansion or not. Um, hopefully, he's for him, he suspects something. Um, so we see Poussin scouting around here. Uh, he's, he sees that other hatchery, so uh, he's probably got to know that something's going on by now uh, at this point. Or else he probably would have seen another hatchery there. Yeah, now his probe's going to scout that out now. So he's going to see that creep at the very... Actually, I don't know if he got up that ramp uh, to see that. Although the look on his face looks like he says, "Oh, it looks like he saw that." So uh, I'm gonna assume that he saw that. That Poussin knows it's there one way or another. And um, we see that. Um, uh, excuse me. <coughs> Poussin is going for that uh, Stargate. It's kind of doing the the very standard uh, 
Protoss build versus Zerg that we see all the time these days where you get that forge, uh, get a gateway, get a cannon, and um, yeah, like I said, pretty pretty standard stuff here. And um, <laughs> uh, Pisan running a Zealot in there for some reason, uh, so he can die, I guess. Maybe he's gonna, he might be able to pick off a drone or, so, or, or two here, but uh, he's got a lot of Zerglings on him, so I don't think it's going to happen. Um, so anyways, we've, we've been seeing... Like I said, it's the standard thing to do this with the the gateway and the uh, the cannon there. But lately, we've been seeing a lot of variation. Like, like it was the standard, it was the standard, it was the standard. And then um, last few games that I've seen, we've seen a lot of variation. Um, the Zerg players have kind of caught on to this build that um, Bisu kind of uh, made famous, and Zerg players have been. Um, Finding ways to deal with it, like uh, hydralis at the right moment and stuff. So I, actually, um, and uh, one of the ways that you can do it is uh, correctly time uh, ling attack here. A lot of lings going in there. They're surrounding that cannon, and this actually could be very bad news for Poisson. The cannon goes down, and uh, he's not left with many lings though, so he's gonna be able to pick off that little attack there. But I see that's that's what I'm talking about. This this build it is dangerous if you go in at the right moment. Um, then and he's at least gonna get a scout in with that Ling, so that was a very uh, smart move by him actually. But going in and getting that scout, he's gonna see the Templar archives, and uh, again, that's kind of the standard part of this build is to get uh, Corsairs and, and Templar. But at least he knows it for sure now because, like I said, we have seen variation on both sides. We saw um, Free actually do a really really cool um, uh, build where he actually went Reavers. He went for a quick Reaver and uh, just. Uh, it was a really excellent game, game against Calm, and that and that was really cool. Um, in any case, so uh, he, he does have Corsairs out now, but uh, it looks like uh, Mensal has gotten has gotten uh, his Hydras out in time, and uh, it's really too bad for for Mensal that he didn't send in another eight lings with that attack because if he had, he probably would have owned Pusan right there, and then we would have gone to game five, which is uh, which would have been which hopefully we will get to game five. I'm, I'm actually rooting for Mensal because. Um, <laughs> It, by the way, it's two to one. NBC game is up two to one, and um, Mensal is fighting for Hambit. So if Mensal wins, it will it will be two to two, and it will go to an ace match, which I'm looking forward to seeing. Uh, if, if like I said, if we, if we see um, an ace match, I'm, I'm predicting it's probably going to be um, free versus light at this rate, and that would be kind of a fun match to watch. Uh, any case, so Dark Templar right now, but but Mensal has that speed upgrade on his Overlords and. Uh, and, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Kusan, I forgot his name for a second, doesn't have enough Corsairs to really, he is chasing down that Overlord there, um, and that was, that was a kind of a smart move by him, using his infantry to chase off the, the Hydralisks while he used the Corsairs to, ch to chase down the, uh, Overlord, because he didn't have enough, um, Corsairs to really just kind of brute force attack that Overlord, and, uh, so, uh, kind of well played by his, on, on his part there, um, it's unfortunate for Mensal. He didn't have a couple more overlords there. He would have probably been able to fight that off. Uh, well, theoretically, well, maybe not actually. Cause, yeah, the ground troops not doing uh, enough against the the hydras not doing good enough against ground troops though. But now he has built he's built up a sizable amount of hydras there, so he is probably going to be able to nullify that uh, corsair advantage uh, because he's got enough that he can he can uh, kill off those cares, corsairs fairly quickly and. Um, and, and still protect his base and what have you, and uh, it's it's really kind of well done how he's placed that that base there, so he, and he's gathered all of his overlords at his front line, so he can actually protect them with those hydralisks, and uh, as well as keep them on his front line to protect against ground troops. And so that uh, Minsal playing uh, surprisingly well here actually. Um, uh, we see him putting down. I didn't see what that building was right there. Well, I'm hoping to see, but Pusan actually get another expansion up. So. Um, Really, at this point, uh, Mensal needs to take another expansion as well. He needs to kind of keep that economic advantage <coughs> that Zergs really can 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 really use to full effect. And uh, he is putting down an expansion. <laughs> so um, I, I haven't seen this before, honest. Um, so we see him putting another expansion, and and taking that outer expansion quickly really made it so that he was able to a scourge is going in but he didn't quite have enough scourges there uh going with a, a big assault here he's gonna be able to chase down those overlords but there's just too many overlords there so it's not gonna do a whole lot except all of his hydralists are distracted so his hydralists are not gonna be able to to attack the corsairs he needs to pick off that dark templar and then run his, his, his overlords around or something like that he is gonna be able to kill off the ground troops but in the meantime uh those corsairs are doing a lot of damage to his overlords although honestly i think in general in that battle i think mensal uh comes out ahead in that uh, he killed off, it looked like three or four overlords and some hydralists, but all of his ground forces have just been killed.